Hey, New Hopes, Pastor Austin here. Just wanted to challenge you this morning with a couple thoughts from Genesis uh, in the chapter of 35. It's the story of Jacob, and as he's moving his family, we know that Jacob married Leah and Rachel, but a couple times in scriptures it says uh, Rachel is the one that Jacob loved. And uh, we see as um, Jacob is moving his family in the latter half of chapter 35 from Bethel to Ephrath or from Bethel to uh, Bethlehem. Uh, we see in Bethel his family um, threw up some pillars. They tore down idols to false gods. God was speaking to him. It was a, a, a very good time for Jacob and his family with the Lord and as a family. Uh, and they're headed to Ephrath or Bethlehem. And I'm going to read here in verse 16. Uh, they moved on from Bethel, and while they were still some distance from Ephrath, Rachel began to give birth and had great difficulty. Now keep in mind, Rachel is the wife that Jacob loved. As she was having great difficulty in childbirth, the midwife said to her, Don't be afraid, for you have another son. She's giving comfort to the thought that this is a son, passing on the name. Um, as she breathed her last breath, for she was dying, she named her son Benoni, which means son of my pain or son of my sorrow. But his father named him Benjamin, which means son of my right hand. So he renames him uh, in a place of honor. So Rachel died and was buried on the way to Ephrath, that is Bethlehem. And over her tomb, Jacob set up a pillar. And to this day, that pillar marks Rachel's tomb. So I just want to talk about the valley of despair. Uh, I think sometimes we're in a good season of life. God asks us to move and go somewhere to do something. And the journey might be going well and then something unexpected happens. And uh, we see in this story, Rachel gives birth. And that birth doesn't end well for her as she dies. And uh, they're still a long ways uh, out from Ephrath. They're, they're still a long ways from the place that they feel that God is leading them. And uh, Jacob, in this valley of despair, in this valley of, of death, in this valley of uh, time in his life where he's lost the woman that he's loved, where he's gained a son, but this is difficult time. There's mourning, there's grieving. He has an opportunity to either go back to what's comfortable to him uh, and go back to Bethel where things were going well and, and go to a place of familiarity. To, to wallow in his grief and, and in uh, the sorrow and the despair and just remain there on, on the road and on the journey or to continue to pick up and continue to be faithful to what God is asking him to do and to going to Ephrath or to Bethlehem. And uh, I just want to encourage you, maybe you uh, feel like God is directing your steps and you feel like, man, you started this journey off and you're a month into it, you're a week into it, you're a year into it, and you felt like it was the right thing for you, and you felt like, oh man, God is just confirming this, but all of a sudden an unexpected thing has come up, and it's created a lot of stress, a lot of grief in your life. I just want to encourage you to keep the course. Uh, go to God and and, and hear his voice and, and allow him to strengthen you to continue the journey all the way to Ephrath continue the journey all the way that he has called you to. And just because things get tough, it doesn't mean that they're wrong. Uh, just because uh, things get tough, it doesn't mean that you made a mistake. I think anyone who's married knows that uh, through a, a duration of, of many years of marriage, you're going to have times that are difficult, but it's worth it. And it doesn't mean that you married the wrong person. It just means that there's a character development that's going on in this moment. So I just want to challenge you in your valley of despair to not give up hope and to continue looking for what God has for you. I hope that you'd be blessed. Let me pray for you. Jesus, I pray right now for wherever anyone who's watching this video is in life, that they would feel your strength, that they would be guided by your Holy Spirit, and that you would give them the ability to endure whatever life throws at them. We live in uncertain times and days, but our trust is not in the temporary, but in the eternal, Lord. And so we just thank you for the promises that you've given us. We lean on your strong arms and we trust wholly on you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you and we'll see you Sunday.